The word of the Lord which came to Zephaniah, the son of Cushi, son of Gedaliah, son of Amariah, son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah. I will utterly sweep away everything from the face of the earth, says the Lord. I will sweep away man and beast. I will sweep away the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. I will overthrow the wicked. I will cut off mankind from the face of the earth, says the Lord. I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off from the, pa from the place of the remnant of Baal. And the name of the idolatrous priests, those who bow down on the roofs to the host of the heavens, those who bow down and swear to the Lord and yet swear by Milcom, those who have turned back from following the Lord, who do not seek the Lord or inquire of him. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice and consecrated his guests, and on the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the officials and the king's sons and all who clothe themselves in foreign attire. On that day, I will punish everyone who leaps over the threshold, and those who fill their master's house with violence and fraud. On that day, says the Lord, a cry will be heard from the fish gate, a wail from the second quarter, a loud crash from the hills. Wail, O inhabitants of the mortar, for all the traitors are no more. All who weigh out silver are cut off. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the men who are thickening on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good, nor will he do ill. Their goods shall be plundered, for their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry, against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring distress on men, so that they walk like the blind. Because they have sinned against the Lord, their blood shall be poured out like the dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them on the day of the wrath of the Lord. In the fire of his jealous wrath, all the earth shall be consumed. For a full, yes, sudden end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. Come together and hold assembly, O shameless nation. Before you are driven away like the drifting chaff, before there comes upon you the fierce anger of the Lord, before there comes upon you the day of the wrath of the Lord. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, who do his commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you may be hidden on the day of the wrath of the Lord. For Gaza shall be deserted, and Ashkelon shall become a desolation. Ashdod's people shall be driven out at noon, and Ekron shall be uprooted. Woe to you, inhabitants of the seacoast, you nation of the Cherethites! The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, land of the Philistines. And I will destroy you till no inhabitant is left. And you, O seacoast, shall be pastures, meadows for shepherds, and folds for flocks. The seacoast shall become the possession of the remnant of the house of Judah, on which they shall pasture. And in the houses of Ashkelon, they shall lie down at evening, for the Lord their God will be mindful of them and restore their fortunes. I have heard the taunts of Moab and the revilings of the Ammonites, how they have taunted my people and made boasts against their territory. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Moab shall become like Sodom and the Ammonites like Gomorrah, a land possessed by nettles in salt pits and a waste forever. The remnant of my people shall plunder them, and the survivors of my nation shall possess them. This shall be their lot in return for their pride, because they scoffed and boasted against the people of the Lord of hosts. The Lord will be terrifying against them. Yes, he will famish all the gods of the earth, and to him shall bow down, each in its place, 
all the lands of the nations. You also, O Ethiopians, shall be slain by my sword, and he will stretch out his hand against the north, and destroy Assyria. And he will make Nineveh a desolation, a dry waste like the desert. Herds shall lie down in the midst of her, all the beasts of the field, the vulture and the hedgehog, shall lodge in her capitals. The owl shall hoot in the window, the raven croak on the threshold, for her cedar work will be laid bare. This is the exultant city that dwelt secure, that said to herself, I am and there is none else. What a desolation she has become, a lair for wild beasts. Everyone who passes by her hisses and shakes his fists. Woe to her that is rebellious and defiled, the oppressing city. She listens to no voice. She accepts no correction. She does not trust in the Lord and does not draw near to her God. Her officials within her are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves that leave nothing till the morning. Her prophets are wanton, faithless men. Her priests profane what is sacred. They do no violence to the law. The Lord within her is righteous. He does no wrong. Every morning he shows forth his justice. Each dawn he does not fa fail, but the unjust knows no shame. I have cut off nations. Their battlements are in ruins. I have laid waste their streets so that none walks in them. Their cities have been, have been made desolate, without a man, without an inhabitant. I said, surely she will fear me. She will accept correction. She will not lose sight of all that I have enjoined upon her. But all the more, they were eager to make all their deeds corrupt. Therefore wait for me, says the Lord, for the day when I arise as a witness. For my decision is to gather nations, to assemble kingdoms, to pour out upon them my indignation, all the heat of my anger. For in the fire of my jealous wrath, all the earth shall be consumed. Yes, at that time I will change the speech of the peoples to a pure speech, that all of them may call on the name of the Lord, and serve him with one accord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, the daughter of my dispersed ones, shall bring my offering. On that day you shall not be put to shame because of the deeds by which you have rebelled against me. For, what, for then I will remove from your midst your proudly exultant ones, and you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain. For I will leave in the midst of you a people humble and lowly. They shall seek refuge in the name of the Lord. Those who are level in Israel, they shall do no wrong and utter no lies. Nor shall there be found in their mouth a deceitful tongue, for they shall pasture and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cut out your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear evil no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing, as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you, so that you will not bear reproach for it. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you together. Yes, I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Every friend will say, I too am a friend, but some friends are friends only in name. Is it not a grief to the death when a companion and friend turns to enmity? O evil imagination, why were you formed to cover the land with deceit? Some companions rejoice in the happiness of a friend, but in time of trouble are against him. Some companions help a friend for their stomach's sake, and in the face of battle take up the shield. Do not forget a friend in your heart, and be not unmindful of him in your wealth. Every counselor praises counsel, but some give counsel in their own interest. Be wary of a counselor, 
and learn first what is his interest, for he will take thought for himself, lest he cast the lot against you, and tell you, Your way is good, and then stand aloof to see what will happen to you. Do not consult with one who looks at you suspiciously. Hide your counsel from those who are jealous of you. Do not consult with a woman about her rival, or with a coward about war, with a merchant about barter, or with a buyer about selling, with a grudging man about gratitude, or with a merciless man about kindness, with an idler about any work, or with a man hired for a year about completing his work, with a lazy servant about a big task. Pay no attention to these in any matter of counsel, but stay constantly with a godly man whom you know to be a keeper of the commandments, whose soul is in accord with your soul, and who will sorrow with you if you fail, and establish the counsel of your own heart, for no one is more faithful to you than it is. For a man's soul sometimes keeps him better informed than seven watchmen sitting high on a watchtower. And besides all this, pray to the Most High that he may direct you your way in truth. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal which comes upon you to prove you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or a wrongdoer, or a mischief-maker. Yet if one suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but under that name let him glorify God. For the time has come for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous man is scarcely saved, where will the impious and sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will do right and entrust their souls to a faithful creator. So I exhort the elders among you, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is to be revealed. Tend the flock of God, that is your charge, not by constraint, but willingly, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not as domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd is manifested, you will obtain the unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you that are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he may exalt you. Cast all your anxieties on him, for he cares about you. Be sober, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experience of suffering is required of your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, establish, and strengthen you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Sylvanus, a faithful brother, as I regard him, I have written briefly to you, exhorting and declaring that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. She who is at Babylon, who is likewise chosen, sends you greetings, and so does my son Mark. Greet one another with the kiss of love. Peace to all of you that are in Christ. When reading wisdom literature like Sirach, it can be difficult to find the narrative thread or the larger picture as each line moves to a different image or metaphor. However, careful reading often shows that there is an order and larger purpose to the proverbial sayings gathered together. Starting with the theme of friendship, Sirach warns that a counselor may have his own agenda, or even worse, he may give advice with his best interests rather than yours and mine. Then comes a list of bad sources for counsel, such as seeking advice from a coward about war or a woman about her rival. Read closely and you will see a list of 10 bad sources of counsel, followed by three good sources of counsel. The three worthy sources move in ascending order of trust, the godly, your own heart, and God. Out of the many voices, know well your true friend and loyal source of counsel. 
St. Peter warns about a fiery ordeal from Babylon, which is code for, Ro for Rome, the capital of the empire soon to persecute the followers of Christ. The source of the ordeal is the devil, who prowls like a hungry lion looking to devour. Resistance is through firm faith that understands suffering is not a sign of God's absence, and that trust will be rewarded by the unfading crown of glory. Do you seek counsel from worthy or unworthy sources?